My name is Brian Krzysznik. I'm a painter. We moved to Kanosh after my graduate studies at the University of Texas. And I've been painting here for 16, 17 years now. Where's my pen? Oh, did I take your pen, pencil away again? Oh, I don't. What did I do you with did. it? What did I do with it? There you it did. Is. I took it away. Uh. <laughs> Here you go. Keep on. <laughs> yes, it's on. Hey, folks. <laughs> Some years after we were in Kanosh, I got a, a letter from, uh, from Sharon Gray, who was working at the Springville Museum, inviting me to participate in a show which th was called Inclusions, in, in which they were inviting artists to uh, collaborate with anyone from the special needs community. And, and I knew Joe Adams from church and around the community. And, and so uh, I asked, I called up John and Teresa and asked them, do you think Joe would want to paint with me? And, and they said, well, ask Joe. So they put him on the phone. And I said, Joe, you want to paint with me? And he said, yeah. Who is this? My cousin. Oh, it's Caleb. Well, Caleb, he's doing the camera and the microphone too. So he, he's helping make the movie. What movies? This movie. The movie yeah, of you. Yeah, you think? Yeah, it's a movie of you. Well, when we first started in the other studio, Joe was, um, it, we went up the stairs, the, these kind of steep stairs in this old elementary school where my studio was and, and for that first experience. And he did a couple of paintings. He did one of his dog and one of my dog. And, and I wanted to keep working with him. So, you know, a little while later I said, Joe, you want to go paint? No, no, I didn't want to go paint. And I kept asking him, you want to come paint? No, no, no. He, and I couldn't get him to come back to the studio. And he seemed like he'd had a great time. So one day he was out playing with his dog in the front yard when I was going by his house. So I just was over chatting with him. And but he's sitting with him in the yard and talking about going back to the studio. Yeah. He, he finally told me that he didn't like the stairs. So we just started working in his kitchen and Teresa would be cleaning up after supper and, and so when he'd say things that I wasn't expecting so I, I, I wouldn't catch what he'd, what he'd said, he, it, Teresa would, just conversationally she would be responding to what he was saying so I think, oh, that's what he's saying. Can I borrow your pencil? No. <laughs> I'll bring my own. Get him. When Joe's feeling good and he's over here, I mean, it's, it's a great, we have a great time. He's going to town. Some days he'll be over here for hours, just wants to keep drawing. And I'll have to take him home because I have other things I want to do. What? It says, my cousin Caleb. Yeah. Boy, but he doesn't want to be here. It, he just sucks all the joy out of the whole room. <laughs> they want you to talk a little bit. Will you tell him something? No. All right. But often, if he's feeling a little grumpy, we'll just go down the store and get him a liter of Coke, and it cheers him up. He's always so friendly. He walks through the front door, and he has to tell everybody hi, and then he has to go get his Coke, as if, if he's with Brian. They, they go back and get their Cokes. He really worries about if people aren't happy, and he's been worried that sometimes I'm not happy. So he always says, Sue, you look like you need a hug. Then he'll come and give me a hug and try to make me happy. Boy, it made me sorry. You're shy? Yeah. Ah, we're all shy sometimes. Often what he'll do is he'll do a drawing and call me over and, and say, what's that? And so uh, one time he did that, and, you know, it was one of his people, kind of a big smiling person, and I, you know, I didn't know what to say, so I said, I, I don't know, what, what is it, Joe? And he said, maybe your wife, maybe God. <laughs> and I, that is such a great title. That is so smart. I could never think of that. Hey, this tagging. He copies my paintings all the time, looks at the wall and copies what I do. And I pretty shamelessly borrow from him as well. Uh, boing. <laughs> What tended to happen is as he became more confident with paint, for example, then it, it became more about the activity of applying the paint than about the drawing. So he would do, he would do these, a beautiful drawing and then just completely bury it under 
India ink or paint or whatever was at hand. What I want you, don't cover them up completely. Like sometimes you, know, you put them under the snow completely. And so um, the strongest part about what he does is just the drawing, the structure of his drawings. And so usually the way it works is he will do a drawing and then I will, I will then I'll come in with my part. I'll do some painting. What's this one? This one is St. Dominic in Prayer. You want to do that one? Yeah, okay. All right. But I've always been very influenced by the work of children, kind of a, 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 a work that is at one, on one level very sophisticated and on an, another level very innocent and very childlike. I, I was never really able to pull that off by myself, but working with Joe, that's just that's where Joe is. People have said, oh, it's so nice for you to teach Joe lessons, and I'm not teaching Joe anything. You know, he comes to the studio, and I'm learning more from Joe than he is from me. I just set him up, and he gets to work drawing and draws his, his little people in his world. And if he wants to draw something, it never occurs to him that he can't. He just does it. Sometimes I'll suggest things that I want him to draw, but he's generally very resistant to any other ideas or any suggestions. I should have a microphone get you guys back. You want to draw the microphone? No. <laughs> I'm sorry, Brian. That's all right. We've we've had shows in uh, Portland, Oregon, and uh, Austin, Texas. And we we've talked to the gallery in, that I work with in uh, New York, and they're interested in doing a bit of a show there too. But mostly, it's that most of the interest has been in Salt Lake City. This quick pan not works. It's not working. There's that the beautiful innocence. He, he's almost my age, but uh, the, the skill or the way he—I don't want to say skill. It's just his vision that he translates into drawing. I think he's incredibly skillful in many ways, much more skillful than I. But his vision seems to correspond to when my children were about three. But of course, he has a lot more experience. That microphone, that you like my shirt. Yeah, the, Come this. Yeah, they don't use the microphones that hook to your shirt. They use that one right there. Really? Yeah, it can pick you up that far away. It's pointed at you so they can hear you. Give me a hold. No, that, that, this kind of microphone, you don't want to hold it. Why not? Because then it would be too loud. It's called, I think it's called like a shotgun microphone. They point it at you like a gun. But you're not going to get shot. Mm -hmm. 